Bert and Tom talking about Cat Williams. <laughs> They were so scared to mention him. They were so scared to talk about it. It was so funny. So this clip is hilarious because I felt like they didn't really get into the detail of what Cat Williams said, which is understandable. But I feel like none of these guys did. None of these guys actually spoke about what Cat Williams spoke about regarding him saying, oh, Rogan wouldn't have me on his show because he only has unfunny comedians on there and shit, right? And I think he mentioned something about them being six of them which I think is a throwaway number, but since then, everyone's been trying to debate who those six are. For sure, in that six is definitely Brendan. Sure, right? We know that for sure. But I think it was more so, Kat said that as more so as a point that Brett Joe obviously is pushing his friends more, who who maybe are objectively not the funniest, as opposed to having actually the funniest people on there because they're not his friends, right? That's something that we know Brett Joe to do. He doesn't really have people on his show that he doesn't know. I think he's he's it's odd because I think Joe's more open to have people that are not involved in stand up on his show that he doesn't know. Like they wrote a book, good book. If they had a viral clip go what you know, a clip go viral, if they're involved in some controversy or something, culture war shit, he's more open to have people on his show like that for the first time than he is to have a comedian who he doesn't know. He doesn't really do that. If you have to he, he kinda has to know you. So it's almost like a gatekeeper thing. He kind of is, you know, gatekeeping his own pod in that regard when it comes to comedy. So I understand what Cat Williams was saying. Um, but some, some of these guys don't want to admit it or talk about it, which is understandable. Because if you do, you're kind of admitting that Rogan gave you your career on a silver platter, which none of them want to, want to admit, which again is an odd thing as well, because I don't think it's a bad thing to have a rich, successful friend give you shit or help you out because why not it's your friend isn't it so the fact that they don't want to admit it or don't want to acknowledge it is almost kind of um disrespecting the blessing in a way if that makes any sense let's play the clip anyway so you can hear and what i mean williams if i ran into cat williams i'd geek the fuck out i'd geek the fuck out on cat and i know i'm probably one of the white boys he hates <laughs> i'm certain <laughs> i'm in that six comedians of rogan that he hates i'm certain there's no way cat williams has ever turned on Netflix, seen me take my shirt off and be like, ha, can't wait to see what this is. <laughs> Man, this is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Rogan's got good taste in comics. Yeah, I think we're both in it then. You think you're in? No, you, he likes you. I didn't tell you Who do you Cat? think his six comedians are? Brendan it's not Shaw. Shane Gillis. Brendan well, you, the six are me, you, Ari. Ari's twice, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know he doesn't like Ari. No. There's no way... Cat Williams is an Ari Shafir fan. Probably not. <laughs> he, you know, he doesn't like Mark Norman. It's, it's, it's. It don't you find it interesting? These guys have nothing. To, I don't, it's not. I don't know. You don't spend them to trash their friends, but it's like, don't you guys have anything to say on this controversial topic? On this interesting topic, actually. They have everything to say about all these other culture war nonsenses that's happening in the news. But when it comes to stuff about you, they have one word answers, like nothing to say, really. Not really digging in and, you know, making it for nothing. They were kind of scared to address it. It's like, bro, like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And again, that's what I think before I said, that, um, what's his name? Um, I would like to see more of that actually on Rogan where he would actually go out and try to get people on he doesn't know just to kind of push them or to kind of, you know, hey, I saw your special. I don't really know you. Let me get you in your show. Whereas most of the time, it's always his friends. And obviously, you know, Rogan's sensibilities when it comes to stand-up comedy, a little bit dicey, you know? It's not the best judge of stand-up. So that would be good to see a little bit more of. And that might actually help to change people's opinion on, you know, the people that he does platform. Because unfortunately, he has all these guys on all the time. They're always talking about how much of a beast they all are and killers, all this sort of nonsense. And people are sat there like, that's the thing is, I think it's insulting to our intelligence, isn't it? Because they keep talking about them, each other, like they're all beasts and killers. But then we see their specials and we're like, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, like, hold on. Why are you guys talking about comedy this way when you guys aren't even that great? I think that's the thing that Rogan gets a lot. Rogan kind of is like sits there and pontificates about stand up and you know ins and outs of it. And then people are like, hold on, like we've seen your stand up though. You're not good. Like, why do you have so much to say? It's the rotation. It's it's Kaz, if, if if he's saying six, it, he's that's just a number. He just means the rotation.
rotation of regulars that appear. But yeah, but there are an exact six. <laughs> you, me, but it's sober October Ari, and, and protect, protect my park. Six. Well, there you go. Then and he probably thinks Ari are two different Jewish guys. It should be Brendan as well. Yeah. The, the fact that they don't mention Brendan is also, to be fair, maybe big up wing, wingus, mcdingus. Big up has. Big up the chat. Glad to see you back with another random show. Also, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, Bert sucks, bean cheese, bean cheese. <laughs> Bert sucks, lols, Bert sucks. <laughs> oh, yo, the Bert hate has been fucking relentless lately, and it? it's been fucking hilarious to see the Bert hurt. The Bert hate hurt. But big us, wingus, McDingus, appreciate you, my G, appreciate ya. Those are the six. He's like, you know, the one that looks like a coal miner, <laughs> and then the other one that looks really Jewish. <laughs> You know the one that talked about Kobe and then that other one yeah. that just has sh blood coming out of his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> yeah, where I go. Do you think do you think Bert drinks so much that he's starting to look Asian? Is that a joke somebody already made? That's just a number. He just means the rotation of regulars that appear. But yeah, but there are eyes like that. Do you think he's do you think he gets so fucked up that he's starting to look Asian? Is that possible? Why is his eyes so squinty? Does that make sense? Or am I being racist? I hope I'm not being racist. Six. <laughs> you, me, Ari. It's sober October Ari, and, and protect, protect my parks. Park. Well, there you go. Then and he probably thinks Ari are two different Jewish guys. <laughs> yeah, those are the six. He's like, you know, the one that looks like a coal miner <laughs> and then the other one that looks really Jewish. <laughs> You know the one that talked about Kobe and then- Has his eyebrows always been so high up and he's like, eyes are really squinty. Has it always been like that? That other one yeah. that just has sh blood coming out of his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess, yeah, I mean, you know. Who do you think Kat's favorite white comedian is? Well, he gave a sh he gave a plug to Ron White. Uh, remember yeah. he, he, so, and I thought that was rad. He was like, I-, I Gary Owen? No. No, he gave a shout to Gary Owen. He did give a shout yeah, to Gary? Yeah, it was a shady shout. Like Gary had to do research and go, was he shady? Oh, me? that's right. I'm thinking that Gary Gary told this story, uh, uh, a shitty story about Steve Harvey after that. That's crazy. Yeah. I met Gary. Steve Harvey. He was fucking awesome. I met Cedric. I, he, I, Cedric's rad. I geeked out. I bet you did. You didn't see that? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. I think I, I found out where it comes from. He, I think he thought you were the valet or something, right? No. Wasn't it? <laughs> Anyway, you, you you get the point. You get the point. Um, they didn't really address the Cat Williams thing. They spoke about it for like two minutes, even though they clickbaited the fuck out of it in the title. That's why I don't want to hear anybody complain about my clickbait because they got that fucking Cat Williams picture in the fucking thumbnail. It's in the title and they speak about it literally for three seconds or three minutes, if that. They don't really speak about it at all. Um, but yeah, we know who the comedians are that Cat Williams mentioned. It would actually be an interesting topic to talk about in terms of stand-up and how people make it and stuff, but... I think none of these guys are, because like, that's what I think, I don't, know, I, just, I, don't, I don't know, if that was me, I'd be annoyed. If I help you, I'm not going to ask you to like big me up, but you then can't disrespect my help and act like you did it on your own, you know? And I feel like these guys kind of do that. They kind of act like they did it on their own. It's like, no, it's, you know, you obviously worked hard for it, but let's also, you know, elephant in the room here, like Rogan's made all of you guys it's like it's okay not a bad thing but let's be actually honest about what happened in it in more burt celebration news in more burt celebration news courtesy of variety burt crasher signs a new netflix deal for two more stand-up comedy specials yes you guessed it if you were fed up of burt you were annoyed you didn't want to see less of him you're gonna see more of him going forward more of burt more of burt going forward Variety. Comedian Burt Kreischer is sticking with Netflix and signing up with the streamer to film two more comedy specials. His reps, um, no, sorry, this reps the fourth and fifth specials for Burt Kreischer as Netflix following Razzle Dazzle, Hey Big Boy, and Secret Time. The first two comedy specials will be filmed by Kreischer at the Mahaffey Theatre in, P in St. Petersburg, Florida, I guess, in St. Petersburg, Florida, on July the 6th. He's homecoming of sorts for Kreischer, who grew up nearby Tampa, where most recently sold out the Amelie Arena. Kreischer's Florida bona fides include attending Florida State University, where he's famously dubbed the number one party in the nation. So that one article is still following him to this day. That one article is probably the best thing that happened to him, isn't it? Um... 
for better or worse. Crasher will executive produce the two specials along with Lee. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, you got Leon Crouch executive credit details. So she's she's getting a little salary from this. Nice. You see, will Brendan ever do this for his wife? Come on, this is what you're meant to be doing. You're meant to. This is what you're meant to be doing. You're meant to be doing this fucking spousal nepotism, right? Spousal nepotism is what you should be doing. You should be giving your wife executive production fucking credits because she fucking sorts out your outfit or something. That's what you should be doing. Judy Mar Marmel and Tony Hernandez, Jeff Tomsick and Jordan Levy. Tomsick is also a director, while Crasher's Bertie Boys Productions is behind the specials. The comedian is currently on the road with Top Soft World Tour here in the US, Canada, and Europe. Um, Crasher's other credits include the, the Crasher's second annual fully loaded comedy festival took place in 16 ballparks over the years. Crasher viewed the, the, the. So, yeah, good to see. Again, more proof to me that comedy is subjective because I don't really find Bert funny. I don't, I, f I, f I think he's funny and a good vibe on podcasts sometimes. Um, he can be super exhausting most of the time, but I think his stand up specials are horrendous. Um, but it's very subjective because you see the amount of people that go and watch him perform at these ballparks, even if it is because they're going to see other comedians. I don't care. The fact that he fucking sells out most of his shows and shit is proof that most people like what he does most people like the fact that he gets on stage takes off his t-shirt most people like the fact that he shows people his shit stains and stuff it's bizarre to me but again it's proof that if you find your niche and people love you as a person i think again burst another one where his personality is probably the thing that sells him the most as a part as apart from his actual comedy his personality people actually love his personality and they want to support him and they do so and he's been very successful at it so it's great to see it's great to see and um yeah i guess the numbers don't lie because netflix also let's be real netflix don't play if your numbers don't work they don't re-sign anybody they cancel shows first season if they put massive amounts of money behind them so but specials behind the scenes must be doing crazy numbers like the analytics must be nuts on Burt specials. We probably are not listening to them. We are probably not checking out his specials. But the analytics must be crazy for Burt. So, hey, congrats to him. Um, hopefully it works out. I will be obviously watching the specials to review them. I'm not anticipating anything brilliant, but we never know. You never know. He couldn't end up surprising us. He could end up surprising us. You never fucking know.